day and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. If you are new, I'm Lucy, I'm a mum of four and on this channel you'll find all kinds of parenting lifestyle I guess is how you would categorise it but all kinds of different parenting topic type videos that hopefully you'd find really useful. If you're not subscribed I'd love it if you would subscribe. If you look down below this kind of video here there'll be a little box that says subscribe if it's red you're not subscribed so click on it so that you don't miss any videos today i'm going to be doing the mum tag video now this video was created by the lovely emily norris if you don't know who emily norris is already i mean are you even using youtube if you don't know who emily norris is um and i was tagged to do the video by the also lovely kate plus um, now these two ladies are very special to me because they are my colleagues. Now when you work on YouTube it can kind of be a bit of a solitary kind of thing but we are very lucky in that we are part of the Channel Mum network and the Channel Mum team and we are creators for Channel Mum so I am there with those two ladies and we're doing all sorts of parenting type content as part of the Channel Mum team. But the Channel Mum have just updated their website and it's fantastic. So I just want to quickly mention that before I get on with this mum tag video. Basically, you can now log in and you could follow me, which would be very kind of you. You can also follow other creators and it will gradually filter through all of the content that they put online, so not just their videos. At the moment, it just does their videos, but I think the plan is eventually that we will start sharing content that they, but we will put out across the interwebs. Um, you can also like particular themes. So if you're really into beauty or you're really into fashion or you're really into cooking or homes or whatever, you can like those by clicking on the little heart and it will let you follow all sorts of content that comes from across the Channel Mum network. So that's not just Channel Mum creators, that's all the plugged in creators as well. So you can find all sorts of stuff that's your bag. So you can really kind of personalise the content that you find on there. So I think that's definitely worth a look. If you're not already a part of the Channel Mum website, now would be a really great time to join and kind of see what's going on. So I'm gonna crack on with this mum tag video because there are 15 questions to get through. I'm not sure how long my answers are gonna be. We know I have a bit of a tendency sometimes to ramble on, but I have watched a few of these videos and they're all really quite funny and interesting. So hopefully you will like it. So let's crack on. Question one, favorite mum hack. I can't really think off the top of my head of any good mum hacks. I mean, I feel like I do the usual mum hacks really. I mean, I get the uniform out the night before. I mean, that's a useful hack if you're not really doing that. That is a good one for kind of getting things rolling in the morning. Um, I like to meal plan. I like to use my slow cooker. I mean, they're useful mum hacks for making your life easier. Yeah, I'm not really great with the mum hacks really, but if you are after mum hacks, Check out that Emily Norris I mentioned at the beginning because she is the queen of the mum hack and I'm sure she will have some fantastic tip you haven't thought of that will make your life easier. Question number two, most embarrassing mum moment. Now, I really struggle when I think about this and I feel like four kids in, eight years in, I should have quite an assortment of embarrassing stories to tell you. I just wonder whether by the time you get to your fourth kid, you're just not so easily embarrassed. I can think of one good one from when Dylan was very first potty trained and we were on a road trip. I presume we were going to visit family because we were tanking on up the M6 and we went into a service station and I took Dylan into the toilet and he'd obviously gone to the toilet first because you know, that's what happens. Um, and I had just, was going to the toilet and had sort of stood him in front of me and he in the loud innocent way that two-year-olds can do proceeded to ask me whether I was doing a wee or a poo which got a snigger out of the lady in the next stall and then asked me whether I needed help wiping thing is that I felt quite embarrassed at the time it was funny that wouldn't really embarrass me anymore. Nowadays, my big concern when I go into services, toilets, is that when I'm going to the toilet, whoever is in the cubicle with me is going to unlock the door. Not happened yet. Had some close shaves. Yeah, toilets and kids is just, oh, it's a bit of a kind of occupational hazard, isn't it, having to deal with children and toilets, but yeah. 
I feel like not a lot really embarrasses me anymore, which is why I don't really have a better embarrassing mum story. Question number three, part of the day that you like most. So I would say that my favourite part of the day is the morning, like first thing before we've got into the get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready kind of zone. The bit when everybody first wakes up and we're all sort of slowly coming round because Dylan and Emily tend to be really cute in the morning. It's like one of us will say, oh, you know, did you sleep well? And they'll be like, yeah, did you sleep well? I just think it's really cute that they kind of ask that back and they'll ask whether I had nice dreams or they're just very sweet first thing in the morning. Quinn is very cuddly. It takes her a little while to come round in the mornings and I get like the best snuggly in the bed cuddles with her first thing in the morning and Wilder I just love when you get him up in the morning either if I come in and get him or if Rich brings him in and he just his face like lights up when he sees me like I haven't seen you in so long and I've missed you so much it's just so cute I love that I also have a big soft spot for story time and like when I'm tucking them in at night and giving them last kisses and stuff but I think my absolute favourite is definitely first thing in the morning when it's like everyone's all sort of chilled and sleepy, it's cute. And also obviously when they're asleep, I mean most parents like their kids most when they're asleep, right? When they look all innocent and quiet. Question four, part of the day that you like least? Mm, I really don't like the time between bath and story. It's a very small window of time, but I'm getting everybody out of the bath and by that time of day, everybody is tired and everybody is fractious. And why is it that kids, when they're tired, instead of just kind of getting sleepy and chilling out of it, do they go hyper nuts? Or is that just my children that do that? Because between getting them out of the bath and getting them in their pajamas, I feel like the noise level in this house goes up like hundreds of decibels. I feel like my stress levels go up tons because I'll be like, can you please put your pajamas on? Can you please stop running around naked? Can you please stop winding your sister up? Could you please stop jumping on the bed? I just feel like it all just goes a bit chaotic. And it kind of comes back round really quickly once everybody is in their pajamas and we can settle down for a story. But oh, that bit of the day is like, I think it's also because you've got kind of water. So I've inevitably got kind of a baby that I've got out of the bath and he's wet and cold and wants to be ready for bed. And then I've got other children that need to be coming out of bath and I've got Dylan normally getting out of the shower and there's just people everywhere and everybody's wet and fractious. And I just feel like there's a lot of balls to juggle at that particular point of the day and I just find it quite stressful so yeah that's definitely my least favorite and also days when we're running late for school and I apparently start speaking in Swahili and my children don't understand me because I can be saying put your shoes on a hundred different ways and it just doesn't seem to get done any quicker question number five the worst thing someone said to you when you were pregnant I don't really remember anybody saying anything bad to me when I was pregnant. When I was pregnant with Quinn, I had a lot of people kind of comment on the fact that my bump was small, which made me just feel a little bit like, I don't know, like anxious somehow. Like I was doing something wrong, which was stupid because this was like my third baby and I definitely wasn't doing something wrong. It was just the way I was cooking up. Um, so yeah, that would be one thing. I think the other thing that kind of always annoyed me when I was pregnant, particularly second and fourth pregnancies was the assumption that I would want a specific gender. So when I was pregnant with Everly and I already had Dylan, everybody assumed I would obviously want her to be a girl. Now, obviously she was a girl, it was nice she was a girl, but I, it wasn't really a deal breaker for me and it really annoyed me. I found, found myself feeling quite defensive. Of, yes, it would be lovely if it was a girl, it'd be just as lovely if it was a boy. And then I did it all in reverse the fourth time round because when I was pregnant with Wilder, it felt like the whole world wanted it to be a boy. And yeah, it'd be great if he was a boy, but it would be just as nice if he'd have been a girl. So yeah, I would say that that was the end. It was, I wouldn't say it was a bad thing, but it kind of annoyed me a little bit when I was pregnant. Number six, baby name you didn't agree on. I mean, we had quite a lot. I mean, we've named four babies over the years. We have vetoed various names. I tend to have slightly wackier choice in names and Rich tends to have slightly more boring choice in names. So we have to find somewhere where we meet in the middle. I'm trying to think. I'm probably There were probably some when I was pregnant with Wilder that Rich was like 
categorically no. But I did suggest the name Zeppelin at one point. He was not impressed with that one, although thinking about that now, I'm pretty glad I didn't call Wilder Zeppelin. I'm trying to think of a good girl's one now. What did I come up with girls name wise? I can't think of a good one. I've actually got some baby name videos in the pipeline and I off the top of my head literally can't think of anything other than Zeppelin but there were loads over the years that were definitely vetoed by my husband not liking my wacky tasting names. So I'll put some videos together on that topic because I feel like I could go on about that one for ages. Number seven, do you co-sleep? Currently no, unless you count Rich. I mean, he's quite annoying to co-sleep with. I sometimes wish I would could have just the bench to myself. Don't co-sleep with any of the children now. Um, I did briefly co-sleep with Everly. She was just a really clingy baby. And it was the only way we could get sleep, basically. Like, she basically only really slept if she was either attached to my boob or touching my personage somewhere. She had to be right near me. So it was just the easiest way to get some sleep. All of my other babies have quite liked their own space when it comes to sleep. So Dylan and Quinn have always been fantastic sleepers, so they've just never really needed it. Wild Up does wake a bit more, but he doesn't need to physically be in bed. He's quite happy to be sort of settled and then put back to bed. So I am not co-sleeping currently. I have done co-sleeping. Do what works. Like, if you need to co-sleep, co-sleep. Personally, I didn't really like it because I like my own space. As I said at the beginning, I have issues with the fact I have to share a bed with Rich. So sharing a bed with like a wriggly little octopus, it's not my idea of heaven, but you do what works, don't you? Number eight, something you bought but never used. Uh, when I was pregnant with Dylan, I bought a full set of um, bottles, sterilizer, dummies, um, breast pump, the whole shebang, because I felt like that was something I needed and I didn't use most of it. Dylan would not take a bottle. So, I mean, I tried with one of them, so you could argue that, you know, I used one of them, but like I had the whole, I had one of those like big kind of bumper nursery sets that you can buy that they convince you that you need. And yeah, he would not take a bottle. So I didn't really use any of that. Um, I possibly used the sterilizer when I first started weaning, but yeah, most of that stuff didn't get used. So if you have any plans to breastfeed, maybe don't buy any of that stuff until you know how it's gonna go because I kind of wish I hadn't bothered buying it because I obviously could have bought it at a later date if we decided we need it I didn't need it right there and then when he was born basically so yeah I didn't really use that but I know there'll be tons of people on here that will say that they use their bottles and sterilizer and all that loads so it's personal preference isn't it but yeah I didn't really use them question number nine is three hospital bag must-haves for me, I mean, aside from like the obvious like nappies and baby grows, personally, a new set of pajamas. I had a new set of gym jams every single time, and it was like just that little treat after you've just been through something quite epic. To have that little treat was really nice of a new set of gym jams. Um, what else? Lip balm and like a, or like a good moisturizer something because my skin just always felt really really dry after so yeah good good moisturizer slash lip balm like stuff to look after yourself and camera i mean you're not gonna want to go in without some sort of camera even if it's just your phone camera you need a camera you need to get those moments recorded down so new pajamas lip balm slash moisturizer <laughs> kind of two there isn't it and a camera number 10 are you a routine mum or a go with the flow mum and what does bedtime look like so I would consider myself to be both so I mean when you have four children sorry the lights just massively changed halfway through um I would consider myself to be a routine mum because when you have four children you kind of have to have a routine because they have places to go and things to do and things they need to take that you need to make sure you remember and routine is what makes that work but on the flip side we all need a little bit of go with the flow in your life don't you so I do like to go with the flow as well and not oh I wouldn't say over plan 
and sometimes I just see how things go. So I'm a bit of both. How does bedtime look for you? Kind of already talked about that one. Kind of chaotic in the middle, but then okay. So in our house we eat tea, then everybody comes upstairs, bath and showers depending on who it is. Um, straight in gym jams and then we have a story and then the girls get left to read together or if Rich is home, he'll read them a story while I feed Wilder and put him to bed. I'll then go back, and if Rich hasn't already read the stories, I'll read the girls a story, and I'll put them to bed, and then Dylan stays up a tiny bit later, so he'll sit up and maybe read for a little bit, and I might go in and listen to him read. But generally speaking, Wilder goes down about seven, and Dylan is down about half seven, so it's a pretty high octane getting through everything and getting everybody seen, and feeling like I've given everybody a little piece of me at that time of day so yeah it's a bit chaotic bedtime question 11 what type of birth did you have and what pain relief did you choose so i had four natural deliveries um dylan i did have an assisted delivery so he had von twos because he was his head was transverse so he was not wasn't facing Back and he wasn't facing forward he was facing sideways so they had to kind of turn him to these montus to help deliver him but the other three were natural deliveries wilder was obviously i think what do they call it um bba birth before arrival so he was born at home without a midwife with regards to pain relief for dylan and Emily, i had um i had an epidural for both of those um, with Quinn, I had about three puffs of gas and air because I was literally, they'd called the anaesthetist and I was all geared up to have the epidural, but she came in a bit of a hurry and they didn't have time to get it in. So I basically had about, like I said, about three or four puffs of gas and air and then it was show time. And with Wilder, I didn't get anything. Not so much as a paracetamol. Question number 12. Have you ever been mum shamed? No, I don't think I have. I don't know if that's because I'm lucky. Probably it's because I'm lucky, look. Or I just haven't noticed. People have been shaming me all over the place and I've just been too busy to notice. That's probably the truth of the matter. No, I don't think I have been mum shamed. No, I mean, that's nice. That's a good thing, surely. I really hope that people aren't being mum shamed a lot. I mean, that's awful. We're all just doing our best, aren't we, really? Number 13, what's the biggest challenge you faced as a mum? I feel like this could get quite deep. I feel like when I first became a mum, it was a really big challenge. It sounds really cheesy to feel like I kind of found myself again because I think when you first become a mum, you get totally lost in it. Like, I loved it. I felt like I was born to be a mum. But it's a very big change from just worrying about what you want to do when you want to do it to basically you being the bottom of the heap that's quite tricky and I also was the first one out of all of my friends I had at the time to have a baby and they were all at completely different places in their lives so I almost had to find an entirely new bunch of friends which was tricky and that's trickier when you're a mum anyway I mean kids find it so easy don't they just walk up to another person and go should we play and then that's it but it's harder when you're a grown-up and I do think it's quite hard to keep hold of your identity and the things that make you tick and make you happy. That's definitely been a challenge for me. And I definitely would say it's a challenge, an ongoing challenge. I don't always feel like I nail it. I feel like I do get lost in parenting sometimes. And I sometimes feel like that's how it should be, but not all the time. So that's definitely, that definitely is a challenge for me. I'm working on all the time 14 best bit of advice you've been given and um, advice you would give to a new mum i would say the best piece of advice i was given i've only really taken in the last couple of years and that is to accept help where it's offered i am not good at accepting help i am very i'm a control freak let's be honest and i i feel like i no one will do it as well as I've done it and I'm not very good at saying do you know what I'm struggling here can I have some help and 
people will always say, you know, accept help when, you know, let somebody do stuff for you while you hold the baby. I wasn't, I've never been very good with that. But I definitely got better at it. I don't know if it's because I had to get better at it or whether, I think it's a combination of that. I've had to get better at it because I'm busier now and I have four kids and a life and a lot to juggle and it's easier if you accept help but I've also come to the realisation that I offer help to people a lot and I wouldn't offer it if I didn't want to give it and it makes you feel good to help other people so if people are offering me help it's because they would happily give me that help and if they give me that help, they're going to feel good knowing that they helped me. I've just come to the realisation recently that you just have to take help where it's offered. And that's okay. And offer help too. Like, help mums, we are all in this together, to quote High School Musical. And it's just easier if we're just helping each other out along the way. And the biggest piece of advice I would give to mums would be to accept help. But also, you know best. You might not think you know best, you might think that you don't know what you're doing and that you need to ask people, but if your gut is telling you that something is wrong or something is right, then it is, it's right for you and it's right for your baby. So yeah, follow your gut and your instincts. I particularly think when you're a new mum, you're not sure about your instincts, whether your instincts are right, but they are. You just have to learn to listen to them. And question 15, who is your mum crush? I have two mum crushes. One of them is Holly Willoughby. I mean, that's just not so much a mum crush, it's just a crush. Like, I love her. She's great. She's just lovely and bubbly, and she seems like she's like a real down-to-earth, fun mum. My other mum crush is Jules Oliver. Now, I read her book, if you have not read her book, I think it's called Minus Nine to One, or Minus Nine to Two. Minus Nine to One, I think. Um, I read that book when I was pregnant with Dylan and it's basically a very autobiographical story of her getting pregnant, being pregnant, having her first baby. Um, but I literally read it when I was on maternity leave with Dylan in a day, not even that, like in hours. I mean, it's not a massive book, you could read it quite quickly, but I just loved it. As a new mum, it was just somebody telling me the truth not what the textbooks tell you like she struggled with breastfeeding she had awful morning sickness like she struggled with infertility and then she got pregnant the second time very very quickly and I just found it really really it I think it really <laughs> sounds really cheesy really shaped me as a mum and it gave me the confidence to make decisions for myself and I'm gonna leave it there Let's wrap it up. Let's get this thing done. Because you've been sat here long enough watching this. Well done if you've made it this far. If you have made it this far, I want to know who your mum crush is. Because I feel like we all have those mum crushes, don't we? And I clearly have just talked very movingly about mine. And I would like to know who your mum crushes are. Anyway, that is it from me. I will see you for another video really, really soon. Thank you for watching and for sticking with me this long. Bye, everyone.